Scotland and Argentina, folks, this weekend. Deciding match between these two teams among a whole weekend of deciding games, to be fair. We're going to go through some lineups, some stats and predictions, and you guys can let me know your thoughts. If you want British and Irish Lions gear, folks, summer sale, a bunch of gear on special. You can stock up on some winter gear if you want to get a wallet time discount or get yourself something a bit more summery. But, um, yeah, certainly... Uh, winter time discount is the time to do it. So yeah, down in the description, folks. Lions Rugby Store. Um, this game, I would say, of the kind of four, I want to say big games. I mean, there's more than just these games on this weekend, but you know the ones I'm talking about. This is the one game where it seems like both the coaches, whilst obviously they want to win the series, are both kind of happy to rotate things around a bit and um, give some guys a crack. So kind of bigger picture, more than just trying to win this series. More so than like a Wales side, which is virtually unchanged. The Irish side is virtually unchanged. The All Black side has only kind of made a couple of changes. You know what I mean? The uh, English and the Australians are more like injury-enforced changes where both of these sides, although there's some injuries too, seem to have a little bit more of rotation in mind, which maybe with a, uh, a minor on the World Cup is... Um, is not a bad thing as well. Uh, for the Pumas, there's a lot of changes. Gajo starts at loose hair prop, and he's still a uh, fairly young man playing his trade in Benetton, playing pretty well. He's been capped by the Pumas already. Seems like a uh, a really bright prospect to be on the international scene at his age. Uh, you know, he's not going to be at his peak for quite some time, but uh, good on him for getting back on the side. Krevi gets a start. First start we've seen for him. Since he's come back into the Pumas fold, it's been Montoja for the first two games, but Montoja is getting a rest, and I guess that makes sense, because Montoja last season pretty much played like 70 minutes a game, at least, you know what I mean? They need to spread the minutes out a wee bit, and uh, it's a little bit of, um, I think Michael Chica basically said he's been playing well for his club, and come off the bench well, so it's a bit of reward for some good form for Augustin Krivi, and then Sklavi also gets a start after... Uh, being on the bench for the first two games. So it's an all-new front row. Petty and Lavanini resume their kind of locking partnership uh, this week with Lavanini come back, coming back into the 23. Alamano is out of the 23. Um, yeah, first time we've seen Alamano drop out and first time we've seen Lavanini back in uh, this season. But um, someone did mention that Lavanini has been kind of carrying an injury, so I'm assuming he is now back fit. But I don't think that's any... Uh, bad mark on Alamano because I think he's been doing pretty well actually. Uh, Matera is captain at six alongside Grondona and Issa. Remember, Matera had kind of a slight niggling injury last week as well, so they opted not to play him, but he is back and he's captain. There's a little bit made in the press conference of him being captain, I guess partly because of the way he was dropped from the captaincy with the old social media controversy. It must be a couple of years ago now, is it? But uh, Michael Checker basically just talked about his time at the Crusaders and uh, how he's developing as a player and as a person growing up and um, still said he's still only the vice captain kind of in the wider picture. But for this game, he is captain and he's been playing well. Uh, Fukundo Issa is also number eight after being on the bench the last two weeks. He gets a chance to show us what he can do from the start. He's a big old unit of a man, so I'm looking forward to see him absolutely crash into some Scottish bodies. Um, Lotaro Velez is going to get his first ever 15s cap for the Pumas, uh, I believe. I don't follow sevens enough to know anything about uh, his career, but I believe he's got a pretty decent sevens background. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes. It's certainly not the kind of move I would say you would make if your number one priority is we have to get a win kind of you know we have to put all our cards on the table it's going all in i don't think playing a debutante at nine is an all-in move when you've got bertrano who's been pretty good in the first two games on the bench so that's what i'm talking about about checker maybe number one priority is is building some depth and giving some guys a chance rather than just let's win this series all or nothing kind of thing but i mean not a bad thing right we'll see how he goes maybe maybe he's just been training that well the check has got no choice but to give him a go uh Carreras is still there at 10 so it's kind of if it's a guy with a sevens background and Carreras at 10 i would say both of these guys are going to be dangerous ball in hand rather than necessarily just kind of distributing nines and tens we know what Carreras can do when he decides to have a run. Uh, Maroni is up from the bench at 12 alongside Orlando. So it's the two Matias uh, guys uh, at 12 and 13, which means uh, De La Fuente gets a rest this week. Uh, Del Rie is back on the right wing. We haven't seen him play for the Pumas this season either. I loved watching Del Rie play 
when he was with the uh, with the Hawaris. He was absolutely one of my favorite players. Not a real big guy, absolute gas and agility. I, I really hope he has a good game because I feel like yeah, his development kind of hasn't continued on the path that we were maybe expecting. I feel like he's had a few injuries, which has maybe set him back. So I hope he's back to being 100% fit. Uh, Bofelli moves back to the wing for this one because Malia is back at fullback. So it's a little bit back um, to more like what we saw in the first game when Malia was at fullback for that one. Two. So yeah, man, it's a much changed side. The only guys are uh, Orlando, Carreras, uh, and Petty who are in their same jersey numbers as last week. So much in the way of changes. Uh, Ignacio Ruiz is going to get his chance to start, uh, not start, his first chance to uh, represent the Pumas uh, at hooker when he comes off the bench. So that's what I'm talking about, about a bit of depth building because there's Sosino as well, who Checo mentioned in the press conference, who's not even getting a game. So he's confident that they've got depth at hooker, and this is another step into building that. Tetis Chabado and Cordella drop down to the bench as the kind of uh, starting props for the first two games. They get somewhat of a rest. Crema is covering lock this week on the bench. Juan Martin Gonzalez is um, dropping down to the bench as well. Bertrand already mentioned. And then Tomas Obonaros Albornoz. I've seen him playing for Benetton towards the end of the season in the URC. And he was playing quite well, so I'm quite pleased for him to get a call up too. Because the number 10 question is still, I don't think it's that certain, right? You've got Sanchez, who's the experienced guy, who can do the whole kicking goals, distributing, can carry the ball when he wants to. But he's getting on, in terms of age, as the regular guy. And then Carreras, who mostly plays outside backs for his club, Stepping in with 10, doesn't kick the goals very much a running 10, but can distribute two. And then you've got like Miotti, who seems to be kind of out of favor. Um, so maybe, maybe this guy is the answer as a another potential option. Because remember, they've had um, other guys in the framework as well from time to time. But um, we'll see. And then Cynthia is there on the, uh, on the bench as well. So um, yeah, man, a lot of changes. And like three guys who will get there. Uh, first ever cap from the Pumas, including one who's starting at nine. So, yeah, pretty bold selections, I would say, from Michael Checker for Scotland. They've also got a, uh, a debutant getting the start. That's Ollie Smith at fullback, or I think that's more of an injury-enforced one with um, Hutchinson uh, picking up a knock. Uh, so, yeah, that's not necessarily what, um, what Gregor Townsend had in mind. I guess he could have put... He could have put Blair Kinghorn back at fullback and given Ross Thompson a crack to start, but he's determined seemingly to get as many minutes at fly half for uh, for Kinghorn as he can. So he continues on at 10. Rufus McLean and Duane van der Merwe are the wings. Rufus McLean is likewise in for um, an injured player with Darcy Graham having a bit of late onset concussion. So um, it's, it's an injury enforced change there. But I mean, Rufus McLean... In terms of depth building as a guy who does need a bit of game time, the midfield is Tupolotu and Bennett. So Tupolotu comes in uh, at 12. Remember, I forgot to mention, Kyle Rowe was another guy who kind of is injured and is not available. So um, they really are having a little bit of the depth tested. Um, and Ali Price swaps back with, um, well, White's out of the 23, actually, and George Horn's in on the bench. So Ali Price gets a crack back and on, which is kind of disappointing for White because I thought he played really well last week. But rotation seems to be a thing. Ali Price, I guess, is still the number one guy. So you can only drop him or rest him or rotate him for one game before he needs to be back in the starting lineup. Um, Fords-wise, uh, Rory Sutherland, Ewan Ashman, and Xander Fagerson are the front row. So two of the three are back into the 23, with uh, Xander Fagerson being the only consistent name from last week. Didn't concede any penalties last week. Happy days. That's what we like to see from uh, from Big Xander. Uh, Sam Skinner, Johnny Gray. It's a new second row compared to last week. Dodge, Watson, and Fagus. And that's Matt. That's the same back row. So at least there's a little bit of consistency there. I actually quite like that back row. I think they worked a treat last week. Um, you know, a lot of threat from all three of them. I mean, Darcy, um, Darcy not Darcy, Roy Dodge uh, managed to get a couple of turnovers. Watson got one as well. Apparently he missed a tackle for the first time in like 300 tackles on Hamish Watson, but um, we'll, we'll forgive him that one. He can start the, the counter of, um, 
of uh, Kiz Tackle Count once again. Um, I forgot to mention Xander Ferguson's getting his 50th Scottish cap, which is quite an achievement, so congratulations to him. Uh, Bench-wise, Dave Cherry, Pierre Schoeman, and Javin Sebastian. So those guys were all in the 23 last week with Cherry and Schoeman dropping down from the starting lineup. Glenn Young is another guy who will get his first crack in Scotland colour, so congratulations to him as well. Andy Christie is still the loose forward replacement. George Horn, like I mentioned, uh, first crack against Argentina for him in this tour, and then Ross Thompson, Sam Johnson, the other two back replacements. So, um, yeah, hugely changed squads, as I said, compared to some of the other games on this weekend. Uh, but not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, sold out crowd. Lots to like about it. Um, very different performances from week one to week two, eh? Really, really big contrast. I mean, Argentina were really quite good in the first game. And Scotland were really quite bad. And then the absolute reverse is true for the second game. So this one is really a bit of a coin toss, isn't it? Will Scotland maintain the, maintain the momentum? Or will um, Argentina with the changes be able to wrestle it back? Stats-wise, I mean, for, um, for Scotland, they had more passes, more offloads. I guess there's more confidence, ball in hand, and more... Uh, dominant scrum. The scrum was way better than the first week. They had more malls, more territory. Just overall, they were just a much better side. It was kind of night and day. Uh, for Argentina, their goal kicking was better, but their scrum was visibly worse. Uh, their carrying was less effective. They conceded more clean breaks. Um, they also didn't kick quite as much ball, so maybe they need to go back to a little bit of that kicking. But remember with um, Carreras there, he does, he does like to run the thing. So... Um, yeah, predictions-wise, it is the Argentinians that have the prediction with the bookies, but only by a solitary point. But the rugby forecast algorithm goes the other way and says Scotland by two. It's the one game this weekend that is a split between the two prediction methods, but either way, neither of them seems very confident with one point and two point predictions. Uh, ben O'Keefe, the Kiwi, is the ref. Hopefully we're not talking about him after the game. My dad will, because I know he always gives Ben O'Keefe a bit of a hard time. But anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts. Who do you see taking this one out? Do you think the, the Pumas can bounce back? Or do you think the Scots, with the momentum, if you can call it that, with all the changes they've got? But um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts, and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.